Hey, what's up, Nerdgasm fans? Jerry here, a.k.a. Barnacles, and today I'm going to show you why everybody should have two 3D printers. Or three, or four, or five, well, any, just more than one. Well, the quick and dirty answer why you need two 3D printers, guys, is because you need one to fix the other one. So, case in point today. The Robo 3D, you've seen me print tons of upgrades for this thing on itself. Like, for instance, I've got the LCD controller. I've got this, the stabilizers. You can go watch my other videos. I've made a ton of upgrades, even the spool holder up here on top. And it's been fantastic. But now, when I try to do longer prints with the extra load on the power supply and the extra load on the Adreno board using this LCD guy, it was just too much for the printer when it was running the heated bed in the, in the hot end at a very high temperature. So what was happening was after about 30 minutes, the unit would just crash. Well, I did a little bit of research and I also felt under the printer and the Adreno board, the ramps were like super, super hot. The, uh, the Basically the technology that's controlling the stepper motor drivers, they're just, they were super, super hot. So, and I also noticed that each time I tried to print the object with a large surface area, it would only get to about two or three layers before it finally crashed. So I figured it was a heat issue. And I went and looked on the forums and pretty much confirmed it that some people were having some heat issues with it. So, the simple solution is we need to put a fan on it, right? Well, that's exactly what we're going to do. But the problem is, how do you attach the fan to that board? And that's why you have a second 3D printer. Because somebody already thought about that. There's already a model online. You can find the link in the description. Download it, print it over here, install it here. Boom, we're air-cooled and ready to go again. Well, guys, when it comes to computer surplus parts, I'm your man. Because I keep every single part that I, I don't throw stuff away. Like, you can see I have fans from all different kinds of builds. I have heat sinks. Um, these heat sinks are way too big for that board. But for a cooling fan, the most common fan that I have a lot laying around is these guys. These little 80 millimeter jobbers that are really, really standard equipment in your computer. So what we're going to do is this one's pretty free spinning. So we're going to go ahead and find the bracket and print the bracket for that size of fan. Now you could use a smaller fan if you wanted to, like one of these little 60 millimeter guys, but I've already put larger feet on my Robo that raise it way up in the air, so I figured let's go for broke and put a really, really heavy, high CFM fan on there. All right guys, just to illustrate my point, here is the Adreno board, and you can see each one of these little guys up on top, these are the ramps, these are, these are basically the stepper motor drivers right here that drive the X, Y, and Z and extruder and, and, and take care of everything for you. And I have my 80 millimeter fan, so the goal is to print some brackets that'll hold that 80 millimeter fan right there over the top of the whole board so that there's a nice constant airflow flowing in there. And that should solve our cooling problem. All right, well, here you have it, guys. This is the bracket that I downloaded. I went ahead and duplicated it. And Curry, you can just right click and say multiply object. So I want to print two of them. And I'm going to go ahead and just print them in PLA because that's what I already have loaded in the Ultimaker. And honestly, because it's a cooling device and it's going to have constant air flowing over it, I'm not going to have to worry about the heats getting to any range that'll warp or mess up PLA underneath the printer. You can see it's got some cool features, like it's got some cut ins and stuff for a nut and a bolt. And I'll show you guys what hardware you can use with these because it doesn't use those conventional screws that just bite into plastic. Um, and these ones specifically are for the 80 millimeter fan. And over here, you can see when I downloaded it, I actually have feet for a Raspberry Pi. You got ramp uh, cooler, and this is for cooling the ramps on the Adreno for 40 millimeter, 50 millimeter, 60 millimeter, 60 millimeter full coverage, 80 millimeter, and then the fixed one that I created, which I ran through NetFab just to reduce the file size and make uh, Curus slicing a lot faster. So here's the end product right here. We're going to go ahead and feed it the printer. We're just going to print it with a layer height of 0.2. We're going to print it 100 uh, millimeters a second, which the Ultimaker has no problem with. And it's going to take 55 minutes to print both brackets. So, all right, let's get them over to the printer and get this thing moving.
All right, guys, well, we finished printing the brackets for the 80 millimeter fan. You can see, see them right here. They actually turned out really, really nice. Um, there was a little bit of warpage on one because on the Ultimaker, I don't have a heated bed. And if you print without a heated bed, it will tend to curl if you don't get it to stick to the tape really well. And I should have put down some rubbing alcohol, but I didn't. But it'll be okay. These will still work just fine. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to take some bolts. Actually, I don't need that one right there. We're going to take some nuts and bolts that I have here left over from uh, some of the upgrades that I was doing on the 3D printers. If you're interested, they're uh, actually size M3-0.5 nuts, and then the bolts themselves are M3-05X10. All right, so we want it to be blowing down. Uh, there's two different ways you could do this. You could actually have it suck air and blow the air down, and then it would suck the air in from the sides, but we want it to pull cool air from the bottom. So we're gonna have it facing up towards the board, which means that we're gonna need the brackets like this. Actually, had that upside down. We want it blowing down, so we want the bracket like that. Get it right, Jerry. Stop lying to the people on the internet, Jerry. Jeez, Jerry. All right, there we have it. Two and a half hours later, I managed to get all four screws in. <laughs> Actually, you guys didn't get to see all the frustration and pain that I went through, but I basically had to use like a pair of pliers to like get the little the little tool out of the hole each time. Anyways, just spend the money and buy a tool with a longer thing instead of finagling with it like I did. All right, as you can see, both clips now are fixed to the bottom and it's ready to go on to the board. Now, if you watched the last upgrade video I did, I actually pulled power from the power supply so you don't have to have another one. If you look, there's two rails on this power supply and yellow's the positive and the one with the blue is, the, or actually, sorry, red is the positive and then the one yellow with green stripe is the negative. So I already pulled power from that side. So there's two rails coming in. So for this fan, I'm gonna pull power from the other side. Now guys, just a heads up, I can't guarantee that this will not void your warranty. <laughs> but for this cooling fan, we're taking a very small amount of power. All right, so we're gonna pull this out so it's a little easier to work with. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna twist the red with my fans red. Don't know how to do this so you guys can see it really well. All right, once you double and triple check your wiring with the plug in this orientation, it should be yellow, red, yellow, red. And you should have your fan hooked up to one of the rails and all your other stuff hooked up to the other from my, from my other upgrade video. And if you look, there's no way for the wires to actually touch each other, the shielding touches. You wanna make sure that that's the case. If these wires touch, you will short something out. Now here's the fan, we have it plugged in. What we're gonna do is, instead of plugging it all in and hoping for the best, we're gonna test it right now, just connected to the power supply before we connect it to the board to make sure we don't have any problems. Now we shouldn't have any problems, but we might. So let's go ahead and turn it on. Okay, I don't see any fire, and the fan is blowing in the right direction. That's good. Okay, so now it's time to go ahead and plug our main connector back in. Let's figure out what, there we go, on our fan like that. My wires are a little short. You probably could stand to have a little bit longer wires when you do this yourself, just so you don't have to finagle around so much. All right, looks like our connector's on there good. So now we're gonna go ahead and snap this onto the board. So it's got little runners, little runners line up at the edge of the board. You just bend them a little bit until they grip on. There we go, that one's gripped. That one's almost gripped. Come on, grip on there. Come on, get a, get a handful. Come on, get some Arduino. There you go. Okay, after finagling with it, it's on there pretty good. Let's test it again. The board boots up and we got a nice little vacuum of air. I've got massive airflow coming out the sides now, more than I actually expected, but that's gonna cut down because this is so, the inlet's so close to the desk. But it should be a radical improvement. All right, so now we have the active cooling installed. 
and I can actually feel the vacuum. I can feel a nice breeze under the unit. That's good. So we've got good airflow now. So let's go ahead and preheat it. So we're going to prepare it. Now, just so you know, every single print failed before 30 minutes. I tried five times, 30 minutes, the temperature of the heated bed would start to drop. And then ultimately when it reached about 40 degrees, it would fail. So let's see how it holds up now that we've got some active cooling on that board. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and start the print. It preheated just fine. Let's see what happens. All right, well, as you guys can see, we're at an hour and three minutes. That's more double the fail time that I had before. So the active cooling appears to be working. Um, and now we're not having any overheating problems and the, the heated build platform staying at 70 and well we're at 210 on the hot end so this this is fantastic i recommend that everybody do this upgrade just because you, you don't risk losing your print if the board overheats well guys that was an awesome success putting a cool fan on the drino board made all the difference in the world i had the printer running for two three hours not a hiccup and the bed stayed at 70 degrees and the print head stayed at 210 which was awesome before that I had printed all these guys. There's one, there's two, there's three, there's four, there's five, six, seven, eight, whatever. I printed like eight or nine and they all failed at 30 minutes. And I was like, oh my God, I was pulling my hair out. But luckily after talking to a couple of friends and cruising the forums online, I figured out it is a heat issue with the ramps on the Adreno board. And simply printing two very small, simple brackets, I think it took a total of 40 to 50 minutes to print them, and adding an 80 millimeter fan and wiring, wiring it to one of the 12 volt rails coming off the power supply, boom, problem solved. The thing runs cool, now you can just run it indefinitely. So guys, hope this video gave you a nerdgasm. I really enjoy 3D printing. I have another 3D printer on the way, so we'll have three of them sometime next week. I'm just trying to get everything juggled around so I can get you guys some more awesome videos. So please leave comments down below. Come over on Twitter and send some tweets my way. Give me some suggestions. Let me know what you guys like to see and what you don't like to see. All right, guys. Till next time. Ah! Ah! I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like, favor, and subscribe. It helps me a bunch. Also, come follow me on Facebook and Twitter. I love interacting with you guys.